it's skincare routine time again and obviously it's the autumn edition can you tell i've put on special autumnal colors for you if you've just stumbled across this video and have no clue who i am or where you are i'm ruth critty i've been doing these videos uh, as a model recommends for over 10 years now so you've got a lot of catching up to do and i talk every season about the tweaks that i've made to my skincare routine and uh, any new products that I've tried and how they fit in to my skincare routine. So welcome. I have pretty normal skin, a little bit oily on the T-zone, uh, can be a bit tiny, a bit dry elsewhere, but otherwise seems to survive most things like it's an old leather. I'm going to be 40 next month. Bloody hell. Haven't had, as of yet, any tweakments. That tends to be something that comes up a lot with people saying, well, obviously everything's going to look okay and make a difference because you've had this and this and this done. Haven't ever had anything done. Wouldn't rule it out for the future. Don't have any issue with anyone else getting anything done. Just, I have a long list of minor ailments on my body that I would totally spend the money getting done before I started on my face. Uh, mostly baby related birth well anyway let's not go into it um but yeah nothing else up yet as you can, you can see the line it all moves so nothing as of yet but i do have a very strict skincare routine not strict but i am very i can't even think of the word i'm very good at sticking to a routine and making sure that i cleanse every night and all that malarkey and also obviously i do have access to the world's best beauty products. Let's not skip over that bit. And so I get to try amazing things. However, I also try loads of shit things. And so hopefully you find these useful because I test such a volume of things and I know what's good and what's not. I don't know, I've gone off on a tangent there. It's just for the new people that have come in, I'm probably gonna get a million comments on things I can't bother to answer now. So the main tweaks, the main changes this autumn, obviously we're going from being outside a lot, or I'm going from being outside a lot, in the sunshine a lot, um, into more sedentary inside activities. So over the summer, obviously it was antioxidants all the way. I'm going to link to the blog post I did about this because, in fact, I think I did a video. I did. Look at my last skincare routine video. I started absolutely caning the antioxidants because I was starting to get little patches of discoloration and pigmentation. So heavy on the antioxidants. I'm still using them, but I'm starting to draw back a little bit because I am going back in for my um, really kind of active hydroxy acids and things to keep my skin clear and very bright and working on the texture and fine lines and the plumpness and things like that. So that's the main change, drawing back from antioxidants. And I'm really starting to reintroduce things like my acid exfoliants and my retinol. One, actually one massive thing that I've started to do, which I'm slightly late to the party with, uh, but I'm really making an effort to take my skincare right down onto my chest because that area has started getting quite crepey when I neglect it and especially in the morning when you wake up and you've been lying like that and you have that huge line up there it takes about eight hours for that to disappear now and that's with massaging products in so I've started to pay a lot more attention to the neck and the decolletage and so I take all my skincare products down to there and I am using dedicated neck and chest products as well one of my favorites and I got this from my I didn't get this from my mum but my mum loves this brand and she goes on about it all the time. And so I have started using it a lot as well. I've done a couple of little campaigns for them as well on Instagram. They're called Pry. And it's just really, really well priced, but amazing stuff. I feel that it really properly makes difference. <clears throat> this is the night cream, this one. I actually prefer it to the day cream. I think this has got a spot of retinol in it, if I remember rightly. Um, but I just like the very, very lightweight, fresh, jellyish texture. So antioxidants pulling back, everything else, full speed ahead, making sure I cover the chest and the neck, so, so important. 
For cleansers, it very, very rarely changes. In the morning, I like something quite fresh or, you know, sometimes I just go for my cellar water and then splash that off. I'm very lazy in the morning. But at night, it's always a very heavy duty, balmy kind of cleanser to really make sure that I get off all the sunscreen if I've been using it, all the makeup, all the dirt. So important to cleanse properly. So, morning. Morning! I either, I so I cleanse, and then I either go in for my antioxidants if I'm going to be outside, and then I would follow that with hydrating serum, maybe if I was feeling particularly like I'm going to go completely overboard unnecessarily, uh, and then my moisturiser and then a sunscreen if I'm going to be outside. So it would be one of those, that's SkinCeuticals, I'll write it all down, Discoloration Defence um, or Paula's Choice, the Antioxidant Serum, Triple Algae, Eye Cream, still going in for a lot of that action, the Kiehl's one, Powerful Strength, I, it says eye serum, it's not, it's an eye cream. It's as far away from a serum texture as you could possibly get. And then in with quite a basic moisturiser if I'm going to be wearing sunscreen. So Tellurian Fluid or something a little bit heavier. Um, the Ultra Fluid, a little bit more moisturising. Or, this is a new discovery, the Dermalogica Skin Smoothing Cream. I really, really like this one. I have to say that I am starting to very much move away from pots of things. So anything in a jar that I have to scoop out with my nails, I think it's because over the past couple of years, I've started having my hard gels and they're quite long. And if I have to put my hands into a pot, it goes under my nails, it gets on my nerves. I hate the faff with the lid. So anything that's in a tube, pump action thingy, and that I don't have to faff with the lid, I am all over. I've got a whole selection of little moisturisers here. Do you want to see them? I don't know whether we've sort of got time in this video. I should do a separate video, really. But the Tellurian, always a good one. Dermalogica, I've used loads. Um, the Veleda Skin Food Light. The normal one is far too heavy for me at the moment. All of these are pretty lightweight, um, but gorgeously hydrating. I'm not completely away from pots of stuff. I have to say, I will delve into a pot for good reason if I love what's inside enough. It's none of this is a euphemism. However, I much prefer it when they've got these things. Have you seen these? These airtight pumps that you get on top of the pots. They're just brilliant. And you can use them with the thickest, thickest of creams and they still work really nicely. Um, and it's just, I just find them more convenient. And it's got to be better for the ingredients inside, hasn't it? This one, by the way, is Pestle and Water Hydrate. Says that it's a lightweight moisturiser, but it is so moisturising. So don't be fooled by that. I find this one actually quite rich, but it's not greasy. None of those are greasy. Sunscreen, have hardly used anything else really this year. Um... This is just so light and fresh and gorgeous. It's the Elizabeth Arden one. I've talked about this loads. I also use the La Roche-Posay Shaker Fluid a lot. There's a gorgeous Bondi Sands one that's very um, rich and hydrating. If your skin is very, very dry and you prefer that kind of effect. Um, but just look through my previous videos. You'll see loads and loads of suggestions. Or even on my blog, which is linked to. Um, just type in SPF and it will bring up all of my recommendations. So that's what I'd do if I was going outside, if I was going to be properly, properly outside. If I'm not, then there would be a slightly different routine in the morning. This has got to be the most confusing and long-winded skincare routine video I've ever done. If I'm not going to be doing the antioxidants, then I'm doing my um, acid exfoliant. I'd normally do this in the evening, but I have started using a couple of ones in the daytime, mainly because they're slightly less aggressive than your traditional glycolic acid, straight in there, bish, bash, bosh, takes your whole layer of skin off type of acid exfoliants. So these two, I find, are really nice for the daytime, and they're both pretty new launches. The first one is the most delightful smell of any well, normally acid exfoliants just don't smell of anything and they're not really that joyful to use. They're just one of those perfunctory things that you wipe on. But this one, the Emma Hardy Exfoliating Brightening Tonic, smells like her Moringa Cleansing Balm. 
it's orange flowers, it's just gorgeous. You would use it just for the smell, but it's doing that bit of brightening as well. And so I think it's the perfect one to use in the daytime. Um, you know, make sure you use some kind of sunscreen if you are going outside. And if I was going to the beach or if I was somewhere really, really hot, then I would I wouldn't be using acid exfoliants at all in that time period, just because I just kind of think it's a bit too much. Others would disagree. That's just what I want for my skin. And you might be absolutely fine, but I just find it all a bit razzmatazz. The other one, this has just come out, is the Medicate Press and Glow. And this one is very tolerable for people who can't usually tolerate acid exfoliants. Exfoliating PHA tonic. So it's a little bit better for sensitive skins and this formula is also more hydrating so if you've got really dry skin then it's gorgeous for that but it's extremely powerful very very brightening and a really really nice option if you don't normally get on with exfoliating acids if i was going to be using that i would then go in with a hydrating serum rather than my antioxidant serum probably just because that's the kind of girl i am so I've got the uh, La Roche-Posay Hydrating Hyaluronic Serum, which is gorgeous, that one's nearly finished. A lot of them feel quite sticky and that's normal. You have to follow them with a moisturiser because they're gonna grab onto whatever moisture they can hold. And so whatever you put on over the top, grabs onto it, that's how they work. It's about retaining moisture, hydration and water and holding on to it, you know, grabbing it and keeping it close to the skin. So always follow those with a moisturiser. <clears throat> this one's brilliant as well. Two good budget options actually here. This one's more, a hell of a lot more budget and it's really, really good. I think you can get it at Superdrug now and it's on Amazon as well. It's the Hadalabo and this is the Super Hydrator Super Hyaluronic Acid and you get an absolutely enormous bottle for not very much money. That would last you a year, I would say, if not more. So they're really, really good budget options and follow with any of the moisturisers that I've just talked about. And that is morning done. It took me 15 minutes to do morning. In the night time, again, balm cleanser. I'll list a couple of suggestions below or I'll link to my category on my blog that tells you all of the ones that I've reviewed. And then I do night on, night off. Um, with my retinols. So one night I might just do, again, a normal hydrating routine. So hydrating serum and then in with a very, very standard moisturiser. And then the next night I'll do my retinols and I tend to use quite a lot of the ones that combine retinol with vitamin C because it seems to be the magic combo. And uh, I was going to say something else then and I changed my mind halfway through which is why I went looked a bit like a children's tv presenter magic combo um so I have two here the Strivectin Super C Retinol and then the Kate Somerville Retinol Vita C both of which I think are brilliant they're really quite strong so if you're new to retinol then maybe not the ones I'd first go in with and because I'm easing myself back in I do find that if I go a little bit too frequently with them, in fact, I probably do one in every three nights, not in every other night, I start getting my classic itchy forehead. That's what happens when I know that I've gone a bit over the top with my retinols. So then I step back and I just reduce the frequency with which I'm using them. So those are really, really nice. And then, like I said, on the other nights, I concentrate on hydration, as I've said in previous skincare routine videos, or I might go in with, if I'm feeling really, really lazy and I haven't overdone it on, or done it in the morning or overdone it on other days and my skin's feeling okay, then all I'll do is cleanse, swipe over with an acid exfoliant. This one's really nice as well. Uh, Alpha H liquid gold is a really sort of basic, you know, basic original glycolic acid kind of formula. Amazing. That was actually the first formula that got me into exfoliating um, acid toners. So something like that or a wipe over pad, like I'm really into these Strivectin ones that I mentioned in my favourites, the Daily Reveal ones. They seem to have had a massive relaunch of their brand and everything is just brilliant. 
So I'll either go in with those or one of my push down and swipe ones with cotton wool or bamboo, you know, just not disposable, um, reusable. They're not called cotton wool. Um, bloody hell. Reusable bamboo pads. That's what I was going for. And that's it. I don't follow with anything. I just go to sleep with that doing its work. And that's it. I'm going to write it below. I'm going to write the routine so that um, you can make some sense of this mishmash of different things that I've been saying. But to pracy the whole thing, in the morning, cleanse antioxidant serum, moisturiser sunscreen, or cleanse, not that often I'll do this, but acid tone, um, hydrating serum, moisturiser, if, not, if I'm not going to be outside. Done. Evening, cleanse with a proper balm, proper, proper cleanser. And then either in with hydrating serum and basic moisturiser, if I'm just having a very, very casual night. Otherwise, once every two or three nights, a retinol product. product and then I rarely follow those with anything. Sometimes a moisturiser if I feel like, like I'm going to be dry, but I don't tend to feel dry with those kind of products. Um, and then maybe every few days I might do just a swipe over with an acid toner and then that's it. Just leave it. And that's all. Um, I always do use an eye cream, actually, but I have only got one to hand, which is an amazing one. So that's fine. That's the Kiehl's one. But I will pretty much always use a um, an eye cream. One thing to point out that I don't do, I don't tend to take my retinol products all the way down to my chest because sometimes I find it a bit too sensitive on my neck and chest. So if I'm doing my retinol, then I normally use the pry one on my neck and chest, which I do think has um, a little bit of retinol in. Otherwise, I'll just take whatever product I'm using all the way down. And that's it. <laughs> I hope that's not too confusing because I did come into this video thinking I'm going to make this really easy to understand. And I'm, this time I'm going to be really on it and really structured, but I don't think I've done that. And I'm just about to cut myself off before 20 minutes. So um, make sure you check out the blog, loads more skincare stuff there. Make sure you give this a like. It's very, very important that you give this a like. And all of the links are down below and I'll see you next time.